guys, we have some exciting news for VeChain. Price is rising. We got a new product that's launching, but I think the tokenomics are also changing. So VeChain is almost up to 5 cents again at 4.9. That represents a pretty good rise since it was like 4.5 just a few days ago, a rise of 10%. We have yet to break through the 5 cent marker, but I think I'm more optimistic now. Yes, they are at Paris, but they've also gotten a new product that's going to launch. We've been talking about it a little bit. It's called the MAAS uh, product or the uh, market as a service product. It has to do with RWA. You know that's one of the major um, narratives. So that's gonna do very, very well with VeChain. Launch with an intent to revolutionize the NFT space. That's gonna be real world asset tokenization as well. VeChain's MAAS or marketplace as a service intends to deliver the enterprise and individual holders a chance to explore a low no code white label NFT platform to trade NFTs. Very nice, they have on Twitter. Trading tokenized assets on blockchain has never been easier. Deploy any real world asset on chain in developer friendly environment and benefit from the onboarding process that makes attracting users stress free. Check out VeChain's MAAS. Uh, MAAS was built to fulfill an important role with the digital asset space, presenting uh, enterprise and individual builders with low no code white label NFT platform for selling and transferring digital assets with ease. I think this will get more activity on the VeChain blockchain, maybe even more enterprise activity. I don't really know about white label NFT stuff, honestly. I don't know if that's really for retailers. And I do really wish that VeChain would focus more on retailers right now, because that's what's gonna bring value to the investments. But some enterprise adoption with NFTs definitely isn't bad. Uh, VeChain's foray into the NFT marketplace sector signals its intent to dominate the vertical with its lucrative network prospects. The timing is particularly favorable to VeChain's recent uh, rendezvous as the sector is ongoing in amalg uh, amalgamation of elements, notably the rise of RWA and tokenization. So MAS will bring more projects onto the VeChain, which is really good. And um, the new NFT offering may help VeChain onboard new investors and users. The influx may also inject a heavy volume of funds into the network, which is definitely needed. So this is really, really nice, but this is not the only thing. I do believe they're going to change the VeChain tokenomics with how the VTHO generation works. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that entails. My guess uh, for that is that... Um, they're basically going to change the generation rates. Now, initially that would be good for VET and it's hard to figure out what's actually gonna go on afterwards because, you know, like VTHO is so heavily speculated um, and if they generate more of it, logically it should be worth less, but that's not what usually happens, which is kind of strange. So I do believe they're going to change the tokenomics to make things more favorable to the investor but that just means they might actually increase the VTHO generation rate, which like at least temporarily, I believe, um, would actually result, is result in a higher ROI for holding VeChain. Like long-term, I'm really not sure that's what that's gonna do. And I'm not really sure that's what they're gonna do at all. I'm just guessing like that's kind of how they're going to change it because they need to make VeChain more attractive to holders. They also might decrease the VTHO generation therefore increasing the scarcity of VTHO, but since VTHO does not have a limit cap on how much you would generate, and there's way, way more supply than demand, even if you reduce it by half, that may not be such a great idea and that might not affect price, which would lower the ROI, which would make people want to hold VeChain even less. So I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. I really have no idea what they're going to do with the VTHO generation, but they're going to do something but I do believe it's the MAAS stuff that might have people excited, but I think people are waiting for an announcement on what they're going to do uh, on the on-chain stuff and the, uh, um, the VTHO generation stuff because that directly affects the income of people that are actually holding VET and people that are holding VET might actually be more interested in that than the MAAS stuff, which is I think is more targeted towards like big names and enterprises. So Grayscale, I don't really know if Grayscale is going to survive because the CEO is being a little bit stubborn. He basically says that Grayscale uh, Bitcoin ETFs uh, will start dropping fees when um, Bitcoin ETFs start to mature. But we don't really know if Grayscale is going to survive until Bitcoin ETFs start to mature. And let me tell you why. Because they've already lost half their value right now. They've literally gone by, down by around 50%, right? That's a pretty big hit. 
even for grayscale. I mean, losing tens of billions of dollars within three months, 50% of your value, and you're still not dropping fees immediately. Obviously, BlackRock is way lower in fees. I think Grayscale wanted to take this time and absorb high fees to make themselves rich, but that's not working very well because they're losing market share. And I still think he's going to have to change the stance sooner rather than later. So the CEO says like they'll, um, they'll drop their fees, but only when the product starts to mature. I think he's thinking as it goes on, the other places will raise their fees so he won't have to drop them as much. But competition is basically dog eat dog and it's very, very high. So not, I don't think it's actually working too well for him. He said in an April 10th onstage interview at Kana Accord Genuinely Digital Assets Symposium that markets have tended to be very excitable when commodity or specific thematic exposure products such as its own grayscale trust uh, debut and give investors access to assets for the first time. That much is true. We're still kind of very much in that phase for Bitcoin. Over the over time, Sonahan said the products start to mature and the market consolidates as investors allocate funds heavily towards only a few products. That means uh, fees also come down over time. We reduce fees on GBTC and that also means we're kind of at the end of the first inning of the first wave of adoption. That might be true, but realistically, like you might not last another inning. You lost 50% of your funds. So, you know, in another three or four months, you might just cease to exist as, after losing another 50% or close to 50% because uh, the funds are bleeding out like crazy. Even if you take out Genesis and you take out FTX, you still bled out like 45% of your funds within the first three months. So your chances of survival are maybe not as high as you think they are. So yeah, I don't really know about Grayscale strategy. It doesn't seem like a great strategy at this point. Your 1.5 fees compared to the 0.3 average, just a little too high. You know, that can mean a lot of money for big investors. So I really, really don't see uh, how they're actually going to last through this. The good thing is like the big dumps I think are over because Genesis and uh, FTX have finished dumping. But like, you know, Bleeding out 100 million, 200 million a day is not going to stop until Grayscale realizes, hey, we have to change our fee structure because otherwise we're going out of business and BlackRock and Fidelity are going to eat us all. And remember, BlackRock and Fidelity are giants. So are so is like others like Valkyrie um, and others because they can actually afford to play the long-term game with Grayscale and they will outlast Grayscale. So the strategy of, hey, Let's make all these guys go broke with low fees before we lower our fees is really not going to work for Grayscale. So I have a feeling that they might not survive if they keep going with this strategy. Pepe has risen a bit, and that's because uh, Coinbase has basically said we're going to do Pepe um, International uh, Perpetual Futures. Now, maybe not U.S. futures because I'm not really sure if that goes with regulations but they're going to have coinbase international plan to list perpetual futures with pepe now coinbase is going full meme at this time because they've already done it for like they've already done it for dogecoin they're looking at pepe and sure sooner or later they're going to do it with other coins as well i'm almost sure at this point that coinbase is just waiting to thwack the sec in that lawsuit and once they actually win that lawsuit, I feel like they're going to list a lot more meme coins. So for those of us that are like holding Floki or like, you know, other coins, I think we're just kind of waiting for that, um, the Coinbase thing to resolve. And I do believe it will resolve in that favor, in their favor. And even with that, we might see futures on Coinbase USA. Now, I'm not really great. Um, I don't really like perpetual futures for any of my assets. But that's like secondary because it does result in a pump. And the more people that are interested in these meme assets, we're still in that growth phase. If more and more investors come in, more and more people daygen in, it's generally going to be good for the meme market overall because these are short-term coins and any kind of bolster of price gives you an exit point that can make you a lot of money. So I do believe Coinbase, as well as other exchanges, are fully on board for listing meme coins because let's face it, meme coins, at least over a short term, generate a lot of fees and that means more money for the platform and which company doesn't like to make money. And, you know, by looking at a lot of these meme coins, you know, with Doge and Shiba, they've actually lasted for a long time. So they're not like fly by night operations. I think Coinbase is going to take a look at the bigger memes that have lasted for a while and they might choose to list them. 
because those memes are not likely to go away in a few weeks. And I don't think it'll actually tarnish their reputation, but this will bolster the market for meme coins, which means meme coin mania is not going away anytime soon. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.